Would you be the jerk for not getting your 13-year-old daughter anything for her birthday? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for not allowing my son and daughter-in-law to use my vacation home for their baby shower, even though I let my other daughter-in-law do so? I have three sons and they're all married. I have three daughter-in-laws and I get along with two of them well. I do not get along with Holly. I find her to be a two-faced bench. I'm not going to hide that I do not like her. The reason I think this is because she'll talk crap about people behind their backs. She's done it with the other daughter-in-law and with me. One example I can think of was during their wedding, I gave the couple a Le Creuset small set because they wanted good cooking equivalent. Later, I hear her saying it wasn't the color she wanted and that I was cheap for getting the small set. She does this often. You try to do something nice for her and then she benches about you. It could be anything that isn't up to her standards. I've distanced myself from her and I don't like interacting with her at all. I'm okay not being close to her at all. I have a summer home. I allowed my other daughter-in-laws to hold events up there. I got a call from my son and daughter-in-law asking to use it for their baby shower. I told them no. This started an argument about me not treating them like the other family members and me pointing out the other family members are not two-faced jerks. They called me a jerk and the family is split. Some think I'm being too harsh and others think it's deserved. Edit, someone asked for more examples. My eldest daughter-in-law had a housewarming party. After it, she told everyone that her taste was crap and tacky. Oldest grandkid's birthday, after the party, went on how she looked like crap, couldn't lose the baby weight, and is a bad parent. My youngest daughter-in-law, she's a big reader, dinner at their place, made comments about all her books and made a comment implying books are her only friends. A lot of comments on her clothes biggest one was at their wedding, she made a comment that she should be wearing red since she looks like crap in white. For people who don't know, saying a bride should wear red is calling her a tramp. The wedding one I gave in this post. Another one was hosting Easter and she went after all my cooking. She's attacked my clothes multiple times, saying I'm too old to dress like I do. I mostly wear jeans. These are just the ones that I've heard from her mouth. There have been more, but I heard that secondhand. OP's not the jerk. I guess I would have liked to have seen OP try to address this in not such a hostile way, like once it's only escalated. But I guess you can't say that OP didn't address the issues that are causing them to act this way and deny the daughter-in-law stuff. I just can't fault OP when somebody is that annoying, that frustrating to be around. You don't want them taking advantage, if you will, of your goodwill. Or really, being able to benefit off of your stuff when you know they're going to turn around and talk bad about anything they can. Fairlock1226 wrote, Not the jerk. The reason you're getting mixed responses is because am I the jerk hates mother-in-laws? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth is a common phrase for a reason. You can't trash and bash people and then expect them to accommodate your needs. From the examples you've provided, it seems she mostly attacks other women. Is she very friendly with the men in the family? Like in a way that she wants to be perceived as the number one female and that could be the reason behind her behavior? Even though it's a garbage reason. Either way, your daughter-in-law sounds like a capital B and your son should have shut down these comments long ago. But he didn't. So now he doesn't get access to the summer house. Oh well. You seem fine with a restricted relationship with the both of them. So go enjoy your other daughter-in-laws. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, am I the jerk for not letting my half-sister wear anything of my mom's on her wedding day? I, 30-year-old female, have a half-sister, 23-year-old female, who will be getting married sometime in 2025. Half-sister is my dad's child. She's actually the child he had after an affair while married to my mom. My parents divorced when my mom learned dad had cheated on her and things became more tense after she found out the person he cheated with had gotten pregnant. My dad told her that the other woman was out of the picture and my mom could have a second child she'd always wanted and we could be a family. I was there for part of the conversation because dad wanted me to be excited for a sibling and thought it would win my mom over. My mom stood firm with dad. Dad would tell my half-sister that we had the same mom. He would talk like that around me and tell me to shut up when I told him to stop lying. He also told me mom could be a kind person and step up for a child who had no mother. According to him, the affair partner found someone else to be the affair partner of and didn't want to know my half-sister. When I was 11, my mom died, so I went to live with my dad. About a year later, my dad got married. But even after we got married, he taught my half-sister that my mom was her mom. I'll say whatever hope we had of a relationship was ended by my dad doing this because she wouldn't believe me when I told her she had a different mom. 
and she hated me for not giving her photos and stuff of moms and for not making my family acknowledge her as their granddaughter like I was acknowledged. My dad's wife never became mom to my half-sister, even though she admitted to desperately wanting one because she was so hung up on my mom. Mom left me everything, and my grandparents took care of the stuff for me until I became independent. I wore some of my mom's wedding jewelry on my wedding day, as well as her veil. I didn't invite my dad or any of his family, including half-sister, but she saw photos. So she reached out to me on social media and told me she wanted some of mom's stuff for her wedding, and I said no. She told me now is not the time to be selfish, and I told her she's entitled to nothing and she'll have to find other things to wear. She called me names and I told her dad really should have admitted the truth to her by now. She said she didn't know why I was so adamant she wasn't mom's kid and it's not fair because I got to be raised by mom for 11 years while she got nothing and for no reason at all. Afterward, my dad's wife reached out and told me how upset my half-sister was and asked me to please consider giving something because dad really freaked her over and she feels hated by mom and by me. My half-sister messaged again after this and told me I was being really unfair to her and how I made mom's abandonment of her even worse. Am I the jerk? I don't think OP's the jerk here, and honestly, if I were in OP's position, I'd be willing to put it on the line and actually march down there and get a straight-up DNA test. I mean, how do you get to this age where somebody your entire life is telling you, listen, you're literally not actually related to the woman you're claiming to be your mom, and still just blindly deny it? I mean, I guess they just want it so bad to be true. I'd be wondering if the half-sister would even be willing to take that DNA test. They might not even want the truth and they're just going to keep believing what they believe. Muse273 wrote, not the jerk. Tell her you'd be happy to let her have something if a DNA test shows her full siblings. If she's so certain, that should be a great offer. Make sure dad's nearby so you can watch him try to figure out how to stop it. The funniest outcome, given the affair partner probably moved on to another affair immediately, would be finding out that you're not siblings at all. Our next story is, am I the jerk for evicting my brother and his family from the house I've inherited so my daughter can live there? I, 40-year-old female, have a daughter, Caroline, 17-year-old female. My brother, Adam, 34-year-old male, is married and has two kids under the age of five. Back when I was in my 20s, our great-grandmother ended up with an illness which required someone to take care of her. This ended up being me, as everyone else was busy with their lives and I'd only recently graduated from uni back then. Due to this, when she passed away, I've inherited the house she lived in, which is a small two-bedroom. I've lived there until I got married and me and my husband ended up moving to a bigger property. About a year later, my brother asked if I'm willing to rent it out to him, which I agreed to do, but have warned him I will need it back when Caroline turns 18. She was 3 at the time, since it is very close to universities and city center. Legal agreement was drafted for rent, significantly below market value, so everything was followed by the book. About a year ago, I've informed my brother about needing the house back as my daughter is going to be 18 and I would like to have some repairs done before she moves in. My brother ignored me so I've issued him notice to vacate, which was also ignored. As he continued to ignore me, I had no choice but to apply for a court order to evict them, with hearing taking place last month. Last week, him and his family were officially evicted. Upon getting into the house, I've noticed it was in horrible condition and it would take a few months just to make it somewhat habitable, let alone do redecorating or repairs. I've raised this with my brother since he was meant to look after the house and let me know of any repairs. But this talk ended up in an argument where I was called a jerk for evicting him and his family so my spoiled daughter can live here by herself and not give them enough notice. They had just over a year to find something suitable. He also said I've inherited the house by cheating. My parents are on his side since Adam and his family live with them. OP's not the jerk. First of all, they made it very clear that they should prepare for this scenario a long time in advance. They said, listen, when she's 18, she's going to get this house. I don't know what bluff they thought they were trying to call OP out on. They had a really good deal going. They had a year of runway to even prepare for this. And you could argue, realistically, they had over a decade of runway to prepare for this. I don't see where OP can be in the wrong, especially considering the condition of the place. Tic Tac Toss wrote, not the jerk. He lived there for roughly 14 or 15 years paying substantially below market rent prices, which should have allowed him to save a considerable sum to put towards a home of his own. 
He clearly chose not to, as he had to move in with your parents. His life choices are not your problem. Regarding the state of the home, did you not visit him over the years and notice the deterioration? Or is there revenge damage caused shortly before they moved? Our next story is, am I the jerk for wanting to eat a dessert in a restaurant? So my boyfriend, 29 year old male, and me, 28 year old female, are currently traveling through Italy. Yesterday, we would take a train from Florence to our hotel in the countryside of Tuscany. We were going to have a last dinner there yesterday night. I chose a place that has the best tiramisu in Florence according to Insta, and we didn't manage to go there earlier. Our meal took a bit longer than expected, and my boyfriend reminded me that the last train we could take was at 2140. The next train would only come early in the morning. He said that it would be too tight to eat dessert and that we should just pay and leave to make it to the train. According to my estimation, we had 20 minutes left, so it would either be 20 minutes waiting in the station or 20 minutes in the restaurant. No big deal. When the waiter came and asked if we wanted anything else, I quickly ordered the tiramisu. Without having to read the menu first, I figured it would be fast enough to make our train still. My boyfriend got kind of red and asked me why I did that. I just told him that they'll bring it out soon and that we have plenty of time to make the train. So it took a little longer than expected, and by the time it came, I only had time to snap a few quick pictures and eat it fast. I offered my boyfriend some of it, but he said he didn't want any. We paid and left. It was tight now, but still possible, so we grabbed our luggage and made a run for it. In the end, we made it. I admit that there was barely any time left, but we got on the train a couple of minutes before we left. I sat down and just felt such relief that everything worked out. My boyfriend just threw the bags down and sat somewhere else for a moment until the train left. I called out to him and told him to come sit with me. I started talking about how we did it, but he cut me off and asked me in an angry tone why I had to have that dessert. He complained about running halfway through the city and almost missing the train. I felt very hurt and was a bit scared to be honest. I've never seen him angry like this. We argued the whole train ride and on the way to our hotel. There, he eventually just said that he was exhausted, turned around, and went to sleep. I cried myself to sleep at night and woke up feeling very horrible. He is still asleep, and I come here to ask you if I'm the jerk here. I'm kind of curious what OP's arguments back to them were on the train. Do I think he was acting the best he could have? No, but I mean, you gotta understand, having to run halfway across the city just to barely make the train, you could see how that's frustrating when it was downplayed that it would even be an issue. I think from the get-go, OP should have owned up to it and said, listen, this is completely on me, I'm really sorry. Instead, OP said there was an argument. I didn't realize it would take that long. It is not like a valid argument, it should be ended with, I'm sorry. Namor wrote, you're the jerk. It sounds very irresponsible to risk missing the last train of the day that could cause a crap ton of complications for an Instagram picture. You are enforcing a huge amount of anxiety onto your partner when you're supposed to have peaceful vacations without any dialogue when he clearly told you he wanted to go. If really you wanted to taste the tiramisu of your dreams, tell him that way beforehand, plan things right and go earlier. It's not because it worked out that you were right. Our next story is, am I the jerk for posting photos of my parents on my social media because my dad's wife can't do anything about it? My mom died 9 years ago. I, 17 year old male, was the oldest and my twin siblings are 2 years younger but remember mom like I do. It was 2 years later when my dad met his second wife, Jen. And Jen moved in with us about a year afterward and they got married a few months after that. When Jen moved in, we had to remove all photos of mom from the house. We were allowed one photo that couldn't be easily seen in each of our bedrooms, but it had to blend in so Jen wouldn't see the photos when our doors were open, a rule in dad's house. We hated it. I always felt like dad took away our home to make it Jen's home. I don't see it the same way, but then again, I don't feel like I live with parents. I feel like I live with a sort of parent who changed badly when mom died and the spouse he met afterward who really isn't someone I'll ever care much about. The positive to it all is we got to maintain a relationship with our maternal family. This is something that is the most dad out of dad's behaviors since mom died. Our grandparents were our babysitters when our parents needed one. They sometimes had us for days at a time if our parents went away anywhere. Plus, they were around all the time when mom was alive. Dad keeping that relationship going is one of the only reasons I don't completely hate him for putting Jen's comfort so far ahead of ours. 
My grandparents and two of my aunts have lots of photos of mom in their house still. They're big on photos in general and never took any down after mom died. They even have wedding photos and such. When Jen became aware of that, she got so annoyed. She tried to confront one of my aunts about it and said it wasn't healthy for us to see photos of our dead mother everywhere, and my aunt told her to mind her own freaking business. So I have social media. Lately, I've been using my social media to see photos of my mom again and to share stuff about our family. When we were an actual family and not just three siblings who basically lost their dad in most ways after their mom died, I know it bothers Jen, which makes me love doing it even more. I now only use it when I'm with my maternal family and I sign out when going to dad's so Jen can't make me take it down, but I triggered her last week and she's been ticked off ever since. I shared three photos of my family and talked about my parents and how many happy memories I have of when we were a family. Jen wasn't mentioned and I shared no photo of her at all. This bothered her and the fact that I focused so much on my mom. She told me to stop posting photos of mom and to take down the family post. She told me I'm disobeying her and my dad by posting them. She got dad involved and he asked me if I'd take them down and I told him no. He left it there but Jen said I'm posting them despite her and that's wrong. She told me she deserves more respect than that. Also, this jealousy from Jen is more about her not liking that dad lost mom than about my siblings and me. Am I the jerk? Opie's not the jerk here. Sharing memories of anybody from your family, past or present, as long as it's within reason of respecting the privacy of those involved in the posting, you're completely within your right. And needless to say, this is ridiculous behavior that Jen is putting off. I never understood any of these kinds of stories of people who are so threatened by somebody who literally is not even on the face of the earth anymore. Like what are you afraid of? They can't compete with you. Are you afraid that keeping items of them and photos of them around is going to make their ghost app rate and then you're going to have to compete with that? Reasonable Lemon 1989 wrote, Not the jerk. Jen cannot expect your mom's memories to just be forgotten like that because she doesn't like it. You're allowed to remember her and you're allowed to cherish her memories. How insecure does one have to be to be jealous in such a way? This next story is, Am I the jerk for not giving my sister my mom's wedding set after she said I could have it? My mom was diagnosed with uterine cancer back in 2018. She went through all of her chemo treatments and was in remission for about two or so years. In 2021, the cancer came back in a different spot. We were given a terminal diagnosis at that time. Her doctors just didn't know when. My sister at the time lived four hours away from my parents with her husband and two kids. My husband and I live less than 30 minutes from my parents. My sister only came to my parents once every three to four months to visit claimed that the money was the reason why they didn't come more often. Fast forward to about six months ago, my mother's health started declining rapidly. My sister did not spend what was my mom's final holidays with her. My mom did end up passing away in February of this year. My sister got her away with several things during her funeral, but we all let it slide. My dad told me we weren't going over the will until after the funeral services, which I was understanding of. When we did go over the will, my sister agreed to let me have my mother's wedding set, despite it being hers according to the will. I was content with anything I got. My sister got several sentimental belongings of my mom's. My mom was more than her material things that were getting split up. I've had her wedding set for the last almost three months. Now, my sister wants me to give up my mom's wedding set and leave me with nothing of my mother's. I stood my ground and so did my father that she told me I could have the wedding rings. My sister is now threatening me with getting a lawyer. I do understand the will is a legal document. Am I the jerk for telling her she can't have it when she already got almost everything? I don't think OP's the jerk for wanting to keep it, but I'm just gonna wish them the best of luck when it gets legal. Consult a lawyer considering your dad was a witness to the exchange of the gift? I mean, they've got a solid case considering there's a legal document that says it's theirs. I just think this might get messy. De La Lace wrote, It may have been left to her in the will, but she gave it to you. It was a gift, and your dad witnessed it. A gift is not expected to be given back and should legally be yours to keep. Consult a lawyer for sure, but as long as your dad witnesses for you, you should be fine. Our next story is, am I the jerk for not wanting a friend of my partner, who I've never met, staying with us when we have a newborn baby? My partner and I have a 10 day old baby and I have some pretty horrible injuries from the birth that need follow up. 
My partner has had two weeks paid leave, which ends next week. He moved here five or six years ago. An old friend of his is visiting our city this weekend, and my partner has said he can stay with us. I'm absolutely furious, but he thinks I'm overreacting. He says his friend traveled very far, and it's just a couple of nights. I think since he'll be back at work full time soon, we should spend the time alone as a family. I'm actually quite heartbroken that he thinks this is okay, but not sure if I'm hormonal or not thinking straight. I basically cried and begged him to get his friend a hotel since our place is tiny. He would either have to take my baby's room or sleep in the lounge, and I don't feel like giving up the nursery or bumping into someone who's basically a stranger in the middle of the night. He said he won't offend his friend like that. Am I the jerk? OP's definitely not the jerk. Maybe you are hormonal, regardless of the fact it still doesn't make OP wrong in this situation. I think just in general, considering you have a small place, you don't want to bump into some near stranger in the middle of the night. Even if you weren't in a recovering state with the newborn baby, you would still be in the right for saying, I don't want your friend in the house staying here for multiple nights. Everything else I mentioned though makes it even more not the jerk. Licky Kiki wrote, not the jerk, his friend traveling a long way is not your problem. Who even agrees to something like this as a guest? I wouldn't dream of imposing myself on a new family like this. Also, this man of yours won't offend his friend, but will crap all over his injured postpartum partner, even when she's demonstrably heartbroken at his thoughtless unilateral decision to open the family home to someone she doesn't know? Wow, he's an idiot. Does he even like you? You can bet the two of them will be messing around together anyway, so tell your partner to go stay in a hotel with his friend while he's here, and get someone you trust over to stay with you. How people treat you when you need them tells you a lot about who they really are, so if I were in your shoes, I'd have my guard way up. This is not okay. Think about it. Is this really the first time he's shown you this level of casual disrespect? Our next story is, am I the jerk for not getting my daughter anything for her birthday? My daughter turned 13 yesterday. I made sure to ask her what she wants for her birthday a few months in advance. She gave me a list. Great. I explained she won't be getting everything from the list as it was big and some things were expensive. She understood. About a week after we had that conversation, she tells me she wants tickets to a show for her birthday. Going to the show would also mean traveling a little out of the city neither are cheap. So I told her that would be the only gift she would get and would also replace a party. She said that's what she wants, and I triple checked before I booked tickets. A couple of weeks ago, would you believe she tells me she changed her mind again. She wants clothes instead of the show. I told her I already booked everything so there's absolutely no way. She got into a strop about it and told me she isn't going. I told her fine, I'll take someone else, fully expecting her to later apologize and say she is coming. But the apology never came. In fact, her attitude got worse and she got into trouble at school. She asked me if I got her the clothes and I told her no, I'm sticking to my word. I don't think she believed me. Well, her birthday came and she realized I wasn't bluffing. I didn't get her any gifts. She was appalled and said I was the worst mother ever. I told her she's learned a valuable lesson. I really wanted to make her birthday special, but she's being awful. Of course, other relatives got her things, but none from me. She told her grandparents her side of the story, which of course was all one-sided, making her out as a victim. They called me and I explained to them the whole truth. They also think I'm awful and the poor girl needs gifts from her mother. I told them next year will be different if she behaves. Am I the jerk? I don't think OP's in the wrong here. In a lot of families, there's not disposable income enough to just forget about tickets and travel plans you made and then turn around and buy a bunch of expensive clothes instead. It's definitely disappointing that this is manifested in the kid getting into trouble at school and acting out further. I would say definitely be there for your kid and try to support them, but also they do need to learn. There's consequences and real weight to making decisions like that. The filthy daughter-in-law wrote, not the jerk, she's being a spoiled brat. You did get her something, something she said she wanted, and she decided she wanted something else after it was too late to change. Oh, and congratulations on being the meanest mother in the world. It's an accolade most parents of teens earn. Our next story is, am I the jerk for calling off my birthday dinner because my parents were making me include my sister? I, 16-year-old female, am the oldest of four. My younger siblings Eva, 14-year-old female, Rory, 11-year-old male, and Jace, 9-year-old male, all have food allergies that were passed down from my mom's side of the family. 
I don't have food allergies. My siblings' allergies are all pretty severe and include a bunch of different things. This always meant that we have to be very careful about food in our house as well as where we eat out. There's only two restaurants in our small town that are safe for my siblings to eat at. I hate both of those places with a passion. The food is so bland to me and some of it is disgusting. My parents are okay with it and my siblings love both places. I'm not the only one who feels that way because my grandpa always grumbles when the wider family gets together to eat someplace because he hates them too. But we both know they're the only options we have. My parents like to do family dinners instead of birthday parties for our birthdays. I've always hated it because it's never super fun to eat at places you don't like. I've told my parents I'd like to do something different for my birthday for years now, but they always treated it like I was some bratty kid for wanting something other than a family dinner. They talked about how resentful I am of the sacrifices we needed to make for my siblings, and how it always shows how much I dislike doing it, and how they're ashamed to say that about their own firstborn. They told me that I should be glad to do it for my siblings. I admitted sometimes I resented missing out on certain experiences. The local indoor playground was always off limits because they had peanuts at the tables. And two of my siblings are deathly allergic, so that meant my parents didn't take me either. Also couldn't go to see a movie, even with friends, because my parents were concerned about exposure to something like peanuts. This year, they told me I could skip the family celebration and go out to dinner with my friends since my grandparents were willing to host us for a sleepover as well. I was so happy. My friends and I had agreed to try this place in town, and one of them is related to the owners, so she was able to make a family reservation for us. Then my sister wanted to come to dinner with us. I told her she couldn't because it's at a place she can't eat in or even be in. My parents told me I would just need to change the location, but my sister wants to go, so she better be allowed to come. They told me there are no compromises to be had. I told them I don't like either place she can eat at, and they said I still have to have my sister there, so I called my friends and told them the whole thing was off. They felt so bad for me, and I told my grandparents too. My grandpa was furious. It became a fight between my parents and grandparents, and my parents flipped on me for calling off the dinner. They told me how cruel it is to cancel a whole pre-planned thing just because they were making me include my sister. Am I the jerk? I don't understand what the argument here is. You literally can't go forward with the plans. OP had to call it off if the sister has to be included. If this story is real, I pray that OP shares it with their parents so that they can see the over a thousand comments just reaming them for being ridiculous and specifically trying their best to limit the life experiences of one of their kids just so that they can always be saddled with one of their siblings. Your one kid wants to go out and do something for their birthday and your response is, okay, well you have to take your younger sister and do things that only she can be at no compromises to be had is absolutely crazy. Owls and Cardinals wrote, Not the jerk. It's crazy how you're missing out on a birthday celebration over this, and yet your parents are worried about the cruelty to your sister. They effectively went back on their word. They'd said you could have a non-family party in order to not be limited by your sibling's allergies. And then as soon as she decided she wanted to tag along, which in my household would have been a no-no even without the allergies, Suddenly, you had no choice but to cater to your sister. I feel sad for you. I think your parents' perspective on this matter is truly unfair to you and unappreciative of the fact that on this one day, you should get to celebrate the way you most want to. It doesn't sound as if you dislike your siblings or have any real contempt for your family at all. You're simply burnt out on having the same unexciting celebration each year that feels like it's meant to accommodate someone else. Our next story is, am I the jerk for refusing to lend my new car to my brother for his road trip? I, 26-year-old male, recently bought my first car after saving up for several years. It's nothing fancy, but I'm proud of it. My brother, 23-year-old male, wants to borrow it for a week-long road trip with his friends. I said no because it's brand new and I'm worried about wear and tear, plus potential accidents. He called me selfish and said I was being overly paranoid. He's been ignoring me since our conversation. Our parents think I should let him use the car to maintain peace, but I feel like it's reasonable to want to protect something I worked hard for. So am I the jerk for not lending out my new car? Oh, he's not the jerk, it's your property. You spent a lot of money. You saved up for years to get this. 
If you don't want to share your car, you have every right to not share your car. Don't let other people bully you into sharing your multi-thousand dollar purchase. For molasses 4913 road, of course you're not the jerk. I imagine he's a spoiled brat because 1. He didn't hesitate to ask for your new toy. 2. He's sulking and giving you the silent treatment. And 3. Your parents want you to give him what he wants to keep the peace. That last one is a huge pet peeve of mine. This is a great gift. This is an opportunity to adjust your family's expectations without doing very much really. Say no and calmly stick to it. Don't get emotional and don't get drawn into it. You're not spending any time or money, but they will realize going forward you won't be pushed around. Congratulations on adulting. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely crazy am I the jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.